Good evening, Vine Life family. Thank you for tuning in to the Tuesday evening Bible study. We're so glad to have you. Have a good word for you today, as always. You know, God is faithful uh, in blessing us with uh, revelation from his word. And today will be no different. Amen. So let's make our confession of faith and get right into the word of God for today. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Now we're continuing our teaching uh, from the subject, the trap, the trap being sense and reason, without the Holy Spirit. We know that without the Holy Spirit, we lack uh, the ability to discern uh, God and other spiritual things. Therefore, we really lack the ability to be pleasing or acceptable to God. Why do we say that? Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen. And if we are limited to our, our five senses, uh, you know, we're, we're prevented from walking by faith. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability to do that, to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So we are all uh, looking to be freed from this trap. You know, and we are freed from this trap because the Spirit of God is moving in our midst. He first moved in the heart of our pastor, Dr. Robert L. Wilkes Jr., and he's moving in our midst as a congregation, uh, bringing us to uh, conformity to the image of Jesus Christ uh, inwardly. And that's an inward transformation that we're all taking part in. Amen. Not just this church, but the entire body of Christ. But we have been fortunate to be visited by the Holy Spirit in that regard. Amen. So uh, we're talking about the trap, but the Holy Spirit has given me different uh, subtitles. The subtitle for today is called Test Results. Test Results. Amen. So uh, we'll start, we'll begin our teaching from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, and it says examine and what? Test. Test results. Examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. Test and prove yourselves, not Christ. Do you not yourselves realize and know by an ever-increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you Unless you are counterfeits, disapproved, on trial, and rejected. Based on the conclusion of this verse, you can really uh, come, you can really see the severity or the importance of us examining and testing ourselves on a regular basis. I believe this was a constant in the life of Paul, the apostle, uh, and I believe it needs to be a constant in our lives. I want to know that Christ really lives in me. So, uh, you know, I'm following this in my own life as the Holy Spirit leads me, following uh, this and allowing the Holy Spirit to, you know, really uh, the Holy Spirit is working with me and examining and testing and evaluating myself on a constant basis. I welcome that, and, you know, we all need to welcome that. Because we want to make sure that we are approved and that we're not rejected, that we're, we're, we're genuinely uh, believers, that Christ really lives in us. Uh, now, when it comes to tests, one of the things that uh, serves that as an aid to uh, this, these testings are certain circumstances, certain uh, life circumstances. Uh, that's a better way of saying it. And there's no better life circumstance than the circumstance that we're facing now. Because this is a time that the Bible is very, very uh, clear about. Um, <clears throat> given that the Bible, the Bible is very clear as to what's going on in these last days, 
we, we really need to test and evaluate ourselves to see if we're holding to our faith and showing the proper fruits of it. Because, uh, you know, one thing we don't have a lot of is time. Amen. So we got to make sure that we're holding to our faith and showing the proper fruits of it. You know, again, vine life, that, that name vine life speaks to our destiny. And when you think about a vine with branches, the branches would be us. Jesus said he's the vine and we're the branches. The purpose of branches is to bear fruit. Amen. So our very purpose is to bear fruit. Uh, so we've got to make sure that the fruit that we're bearing is consistent with our faith. Amen. Glory to God. So let's go over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And uh, we're going to read verse 2. And we'll see uh, what the Holy Spirit does in the lives of those who he's called to, to teach his word, to lead the body of Christ, myself being one of those people. And he, you hear him say here, he says, Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by. Be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. So the Holy Spirit being the true teacher of the body of Christ, being the true evaluator of the body of Christ, the true tester of the body of Christ, uh, you can see in this scripture, if a preacher of the gospel is to show the people of God in what way their lives are wrong, well, the Holy Spirit shares his test results with the teacher so that the, the, the teacher is uh, aware of the adjustments that need to be made. Amen. So I believe that the Holy Spirit has shared test results with me uh, to direct me in my teaching uh, for the purpose of making sure that we're all holding to our faith and showing the proper fruits of it in these last days. Uh, very important that we do that. Very important that we keep our lives before God so that he can assist us in testing and evaluating uh, our lives to see whether we are holding to our faith and showing the proper fruits of it. Amen. So, again, uh, I'll say it again, the current events and climate in the earth uh, have presented us all a perfect opportunity to test and evaluate ourselves to see whether we're, we're uh, genuine in our faith and we're producing, we're uh, manifesting the proper fruits. So um, turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and this is the evaluation that I received from the Holy Spirit. This reflects the test results that uh, the Holy Spirit has shared with me. And this is not, he hasn't shared with me any individual's test results. He hasn't shared with me your test results as an individual. But as he's shown me uh, what he is observing in the body of Christ, he led me to this scripture here. And then there's three, three categories that he showed me. Um, so let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 3. It says, But even if our gospel, the glad tidings, also be hidden, obscured, covered up with a veil that hinders the knowledge of God, it is hidden only to those who are perishing, only to those who are perishing, and obscured only to those obscured, only to those who are spiritually dying and veiled only to those who are lost. It says, for the God of this world, verse 4, has blinded the unbelievers' minds that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the Messiah, whose image and likeness, who is the image and likeness of God. Now let's go uh, over verse 3. I want to look at this very closely, line by line. 
And I want to start by looking at this uh, particular phrase. It says, covered up with the veil that hinders the knowledge of God. Now, I'll begin from the beginning of, of verse 3. It says, but even if our gospel, the glad tidings also be hidden, obscured, and covered up with the veil that hinders the knowledge of God. That hinders the knowledge of God. It talks about a veil that hinders the knowledge of God. What is that veil? That veil that hinders the knowledge of God is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. Sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. Sense and reason making reference to our five senses, senses, namely our eyes and our ears, and also our mind, our carnal mind, without the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we're going to uh, understand the word of God, we need the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. Without the, the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for us to understand uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. But we have that power. And we have that influence because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. Glory to God. So let's continue on. That veil is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. Now, there's three categories that we just read and we'll go, we'll go back over them. But these three categories are very alarming because they're as follows. Number one, the first category are those who are perishing. Those who are perishing. Perishing simply means, uh, to perish means to die. But let's look at that a little bit more closely. Uh, the evaluation that we're undergoing, that we should be doing on a constant basis, is one that shows or reveals to us whether or not Christ is in us. A better way of saying that is just like the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 1, I believe, verse 21. He says, I've, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ uh, who lives in me. So the evaluation, the test is to see whether there's evidence of his life in us. The evaluation is geared at revealing to us if, if there's evidence of the life of Christ in us. And if there's no evidence of the life of Christ in us, then we should be, be, be extremely alarmed and uh, make sure that we repent and get back on track with God. Amen. So it says... The first category are those who are perishing. To perish means to die, or it's someone who is someone who is perishing. Uh, the indication is there's no evidence of life, and so just like I got through saying, the the Spirit of God wants us to to know he's, he, this evaluation will prove whether or not there's evidence of His life, His life in us. Amen. Two, those who are spiritually dying. Pretty much the same thing. Those who are perishing lack evidence of his life in them. Those who are spiritually dying, same thing. Christ dwells in us by his spirit. So if we're, we're alive spiritually, the evidence is his life in us. There should be evidence of him living in us. If there's no evidence of him living in us, then we would fall under the category of those who are dying spiritually. And then number three, those who are lost. A person who is lost has no direction. You know, if you were out on the street and you saw a person wandering, you might go up to that person and say, hey, are you lost? Can I help you find your way? Well, those who are lost are existing without the Lord's direction. Amen. So those are three categories that the Holy Spirit has brought to my attention. These are, these are three uh, very concerning categories that some believers fall into. And um, 
That's why it's very important for us to continually test, evaluate, and examine ourselves to see whether, whether or not there's evidence of his life in us. Now, this, let's get a little bit more practical. Let's get a little bit more practical. Um, just mention that the times in which we live are, are a time, and, and this is what really, what, what, what God showed me about these times. This time is like a pop quiz. Uh, you can recall being in school, uh, you know, times where you come in, you sit down at your desk, and your teacher walks in, she's got, you know, uh, a stack of tests under her arm, and she says, clear, clear your desk, we're going to have a pop quiz, you know, and then you're just like, oh man, I wasn't looking for that. None of us, you know, the majority of people weren't looking for what's happened. The majority of us weren't looking or expecting a pandemic. Uh, a lot of us weren't looking or expecting the, the turmoil, the confusion, uh, the strife amongst people that we're experiencing in these times. Since we weren't expecting them, it's like a pop quiz. And so how, how do we test ourselves in these times? Well, a good thing to look at is what is your interpretation of the events and the climate of, of, of today's, of the times in which we're living? And then how are you responding? How are you responding to the times, the events that are taking place uh, currently? That would, your, your interpretation of current events and your response to current events and the climate of today will reveal to you whether or not Christ is really living in you. You can, you can look at your interpretation of current events, how you're seeing them, the conclusions that you're coming to with regard to these current events, and then how you've been responding to this current climate and the events that are, that are taking place Currently, is the life of Christ evidence in your evident in your interpretation? Is there any evidence? Uh, let me be more specific. Are you interpreting the current events with Scripture, or are you uh, coming to conclusions based on what the news is reporting or what other people are saying about the times? Uh, what whatever conclusions you, you you're coming to based on current events, reveal whether or not the life of Christ, uh, well, let me say it like this, when you, when you examine, when you personally examine how you're interpreting the events of today, ask yourself, am I doing that with scripture? Is there, is there any scripture, scriptural reference uh, to the conclusions that I've come to as, a, as, an, indiv in, as an individual. Because if there's not, then there's no evidence of his life in your conclusion. Amen. You should be, that should concern you. Then when you look at how you're reacting, how you're reacting to the, the climate of the day, and to the current events of the day. How are you reacting? Can you detect the life of Christ, his life in your reactions? It, it, are you reacting based on the word of God? Are you reacting based on the promptings of the spirit of God? Because if you're not, if you're reacting in fear, if you're reacting in anxiety, then you really need to know that and do a, a true assessment, a true evaluation, a true test to see is the fruit, the fruit uh, based on my reaction, does that line up with what I say I believe? Amen. Glory to God. We, time is not on our side. Time is not on our side. Amen. So, it's, it's very, it's vital for us to examine ourselves, namely the way we're interpreting current events and, the, and this current climate and how we're reacting to the things that are going on currently and, and this, this, this environment 
of the day. Amen. Now, in order to see if we're, we're, we're uh, responding appropriately, let's go to the Bible, which would be our textbook that contains the information that we're, we're, we're testing ourselves on. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, because in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus, who is the Alpha and the Omega, who is, Jesus is the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. What, what, what am I getting at? Well, if Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, that means he's already in the future. So if Jesus uh, gives us an account of the future in the word of God, that account is 100% accurate. Why? Because he's already, he is the future. He's not in the future. He is the future. Amen. So in Matthew 24, Jesus gives us an account of future events. Glory to God. So, does your, in, does your interpretation of current events line up with Matthew 24? Uh, is, are you responding the way Jesus instructed his people to respond in, in Matthew 24? Let's see. He says, verse 3, while he was seated at the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, when will this take place? That He's talking about the destruction of the temple that happened 70 years after the ascension of Jesus Christ. And what will be the sign of your coming? The sign of your coming. That hasn't happened yet. The sign of your coming and the end, the completion, the consummation of the age. Now, what age is he talking about? He's talking about the age that we live in. We live in the church age. We live in the age of grace, an age where God is holding out his favor, his mercy to whosoever will. Amen. This is the age that we're in. We're in the age where God is being gracious to all of mankind, offering salvation to whosoever will uh, through his son, Jesus Christ. So when that he's saying when will that age end? What are, and then Jesus answers here in verse 4. He says, Jesus answered them, Be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you, and leading you into error. Okay, so in verse 4, Jesus starts by describing the climate of the last days. The climate of the last days based on Jesus, who is the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus who was and is and is to come, who is the future. So his report with regard to the future is a report with 100% accuracy. Amen. He says the climate of the last days will be one of deception. So he warns us of deception. Now, deception requires information. So, let, let's be very practical. When, if Jesus was talking today, he would tell us, you got to be very careful that the information that you're getting is not misleading you. Amen? So, what is the number one source of information? I'm not going to say it, but you already know it. The number one source of information is. And a lot of us are focused in on that source and getting our information from that source and believing it. But Jesus said, make sure that no man misleads you. Verse 5, for many will come on the strength of my name, appropriating the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And then he says, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened or troubled. For this must take place, but the end is not yet. So 
Now Jesus starts talking about how we should respond. We shouldn't respond in fear. Are you responding to the current events, this, this current atmosphere? Are you responding in fear? Or are you responding in faith? That's one of the, the things you can use to test and evaluate yourself to see, the where, see uh, whether or not you're holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. You will hear wars, rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened or troubled, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. An ethnic group will rise against ethnic group. We know that word nation is the Greek word ethnos, where we get our English word ethnicity or ethnic. So how, uh, how, you, how are you interpreting the, the racial tension? How are you interpreting that? How are you responding to the racial tension? We're, we're a congregation of, of, that are predominantly uh, what the world refers to to us as Afri African American, uh, as an as a African American believer, how are you responding to the racial tension? What, what is your interpretation of it? Are you seeing it from a biblical view or are you seeing it from a world view? Are you seeing it from an emotional uh, point of view based on your own experience with racism. You got you to gotta test and evaluate how you're interpreting the racial tensions of today. You got to test and evaluate how you're responding to the racial tensions of today. Because when Jesus is talking about nation rising against Nation, he is putting that in, a, in the context of signs for his return. Amen. Uh, racial tension is accompanied by very strong emotions. So are you allowing your emotions to interpret uh, the meaning of these racial tensions? Or are you using the Bible? Amen. Are you responding emotionally or are you responding to scripture? Amen. You got three minutes left. Uh, got three minutes left, so I'll stay there with, with, with nation rising against nation. Ethnic group against another ethnic group. Is your view and response in accordance with scripture, namely 2 Corinthians 5 and 17? Are you, in, in, in these last days, are you grasping, believing, conforming to who the Bible says you are. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Do you see yourself as the new creation or do you see yourself as African American? Because God doesn't refer to you who are in Christ with regard to your ethnicity. If you're black, if you're white, if you're Asian, so-called, that's what the world calls us. But God refers to those who are in Christ as the new creation. Uh, so are you believing what God says you are or who God says you are? Uh, let me correct myself. Or are you still seeing yourself the way the world sees you? and responding based on what the world says you are? Are you making the transition like the Apostle Paul from one who used to put trust 
and what he was in the flesh. But you see the transition. He transitioned from one who used to put trust in what he was in the flesh to one who wanted to be found and known as who he was in Christ. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. You'll see a, you'll see a transformation there. And then in verse 8, you'll see that the Apostle Paul makes a comparison between the two. He made a comparison between what he was in the flesh. Um, he compared that with the knowledge of Christ. Well, when you find out who Christ is in you, you now find out your new identity. Your new identity is the new creation. Why? Because you're now in Christ. If you are still responding to the racial tension based on what you are in the flesh, you are now engaged. What you're doing, you're engaging. You're engaging in the lie of race. Race is a lie. The concept of race does not come from God. The Bible says out of one blood, God made all ethnic groups dwell on the earth. There's only one race. There's only one race. And th those who are in Christ are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And it then it gets specific. Those new things are what? They're from God. So as a new creation, we have to start believing and conforming to who God says we are in Christ. Amen. So evaluate, evaluate yourself based on that. Evaluate your reactions and your interpretations by the scriptures. Amen. Didn't get uh, to finish today, so we'll pick up there on, on Sunday morning at uh, 9.15. So look forward to seeing you then. Let me uh, remind you of the four options that we made available to you where you can return your tithe and give your various offerings. So number one, you can log on to ByLifeChristianFellowship.com and, and do your giving online. Number two, the address to the church is in the description box located at the bottom of your screen. You can mail in your tithe and offerings at that address. And for those of you who choose the third option, will be here until 8 p.m. this evening to receive your tithes and offerings in person. Number four, you can always give us a call here at the church, and Robin and myself will come to your place of residence and uh, pick up your, your tithes and your offerings in person. Before we leave, let me declare the word of God over you. And this is how we're supposed to respond in this hour to this pandemic. We're supposed to respond in faith. Uh, speaking to the pandemic and telling the pandemic that God, our God, has protected us. He's given his angels charge over us. Even if we dash our foot against the stone, they'll bear us up in their, in our hand, in their hands. Amen. We're supposed to declare of the Lord that he's our refuge and our fortress. And our fortress. When we make that declaration, the angels will hearken to what we've given voice to and carry out our covenant of protection. That's how we respond in faith. That response is evidence that his life is in you. Amen. Christ, if he was here in person, in body, he's here in us, but if he was here in person, in bodily form, he would speak to the pandemic knowing that he has authority over it and that pandemic would die. It would obey him and die. Amen. Well, Christ is in us. And Christ is rising up in us in these last days. The Bible talks about the, the uh, glorious liberty of the children of God. And that's what we're laying hold on. We're laying hold of in these last days. The glorious liberty. 
being liberated from the trap of sense and reason without the Holy Ghost. How is that liberation possible? It's when Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, lives his life in and through us. Amen. That's what we're, we're laying hold of. And God is going to present us to the world as the solution in these last days. So having said that, God bless you. Love you. Look forward to seeing you soon. For more information on Vine Life Christian Fellowship, please visit our website at www.vinelifechristianfellowship.com. Options concerning the tithe, offerings, partnership, or favor challenge are located in the description box below. It is our hope that you have been blessed and enlightened by this message. As we begin our online journey, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel ensuring that you will not miss future messages. On behalf of Vine Life Christian Fellowship, we would like to thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day, and we will see you next time.